Hello. Great to be with you once again. This time rolls around pretty quickly for me. Uh, this is Wednesday, I believe the 22nd uh, of October. And uh, we have some nice things coming up here at the parish this weekend. I call it a pretty big weekend. Uh, first of all, in church, after each Mass this Sunday, we're going to begin a, um, a prayer ministry uh, so that after the Mass, and that's all the Masses, if you wish to be prayed over for any reason, um, you can come up for that purpose, and there will be people there to um, pray with you, for you, and... Um, you know, it doesn't take a long time, but it really is a, a beautiful outreach of the community and faith to any of us who are in particular need, or if we know somebody else in need and we want to be a stand-in for them, you can do that. Uh, we are also going to have our Knights, Knights of Columbus breakfast after each of the two Masses this Sunday, uh, after the 9 and after the 11. Always a, a good repast for pretty low cost. And then at 1.30, we're going to have a chili cook-off on the porch off the parking lot. But at the same time, we are going to have a trunk or treat for any of the kids uh, who want to come by, uh, different uh, people, you know, bring their trucks or cars or vans and um, open the trunks. And uh, they have good good stuff in there. Many times the, the trunk is decorated in one way or another. Uh, it just makes for an easy, uh, you know, go around, walk around for the kids at least and for their parents. Uh, you can do it in lieu of a Halloween night or... Um, Along with, it's up to you, but this is our offering for Halloween, okay? We'd love to see it. I think that's enough for the announcements at the moment. Uh, we do have uh, a week from this weekend, we have um, a holiday, a holy day. Um, All Saints Day is November 1, the day after Halloween on which we honor the saints, and you may know that Halloween originally meant that. It's two British words, contractions for holy evening. That was the night before we celebrated all saints on November 1. Boy, the Halloween thing seems to have been, we've been carried away with it. <clears throat> I don't know who's carrying it away. I have some suspicions, but... It's not quite the holy night it once was. Uh, young people, kids used to dress up as uh, one of the saints in honor of the next day's feast and come around and ask for food for the poor. But many who were begging uh, were poor, and so people would give generously to them. It's a little bit different situation now. but um, And then... On Sunday itself, uh, November 2nd, we are going to have, um, I think it'll be at our 11 o'clock Mass. At any rate, uh, we're going to have, uh, we'll be honoring all those who have been buried from our parish uh, during this past year. So if you have anyone uh, whom uh, you have attended to, you know, and uh, seen them over to the other side into the Lord's kingdom yeah, this past year, uh, please feel free to come and honor. Let the office know you're coming if you can. Uh, and finally, I close with the reading for this coming Sunday. I really love it, uh, the gospel, particularly Mark 10, uh, verses 46 through 52, where Jesus heals uh, heals the blind man, Bartimaeus. Uh, and it appears as though, well, for a number of reasons, that he's been blind all of his life. 
Um, there are some details in it I'd like to share that I really don't usually get to share on a Sunday. Uh, one is that he is he is hearing, he's begging by the roadside. He's on his, sitting on his cloak. And by the way, that cloak is very uh, important to the poor people. Uh, it is their seat makes the ground a little more comfortable for them during the day. It's their cover by night, their protection by day uh, from the sun and or if there is inclement weather. Uh, for the people who are uh, begging for money, uh, it becomes, you know, the container for whatever the people throw to them or at them, depending upon uh, people's generosity or lack thereof. But that blanket literally, literally is both their bedding and their clothing. <clears throat> In this story, we are told that Bartimaeus hears that Jesus of Nazareth is coming by, and on hearing that it was Jesus, he begins to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. Now, he must have heard of Jesus. He's blind, but that usually means an increase in one of the other senses. For him, it probably was hearing. He certainly overheard, you know, in his public seating along the roadside, overheard people talking about Jesus. <clears throat> but now he hears the crowd coming and realizes that Jesus is in the middle of that crowd. And as the Lord walks by with the crowd, you can imagine they're pretty noisy and gabbing with one another. He cries out, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. Uh, we might say, yes, he's inviting Jesus to heal him. But yeah, just by crying out Jesus' name, and asking for pity, he's also inviting Jesus into his life. Uh, he doesn't like, um, you know, the tax collector Zacchaeus have a nice home that he can invite him to and woo him for a miracle. He has nothing except his voice, which would have had to be considered as louder than the crowd passing by. Um, it just stands out. Well, this poor man knew that he was risking the wrath of uh, people being disturbed by him. In fact, they tell him to shut up. And in fact, uh, many rebuked him, telling him to be silent, as he would have done with these young men. But he yelled out all the more, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. Like a deeper invitation to Jesus to come to him and he's still sitting on his blanket, we gather, uh, because Jesus hears him and says, um, call him. Uh, just call him. So to come to Jesus, we do usually need others to help us there, almost always. Uh, following Jesus is a fellowship as well as a fellowship. So all, all of a sudden, the group, of course, changes their tune. The master is calling you. They said, take courage, get up. Jesus is calling you. Oh, yeah, we're going to be on his side now um, with you. So uh, mind you this detail. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Now, he's blind. He doesn't know how he's making his way through the crowd. It seems as though he doesn't care. And, of course, he will have apparently, or could have at least, apparently lost his cloak, his only <laughs> material ownership, uh, so to speak. Maybe even coins on it. He just threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Isn't that a beautiful, spontaneous a response to Jesus? saying, come, really, come. But the rest of you, call him, call him. And the blind man goes to him. Jesus has invited him now to himself. He's invited Bartimaeus 
to himself, call him. He comes to Jesus. Jesus asked him, what do you want? What do you want me to do for you? And the man says, Bartimaeus says, I, I, I want to see, Master, I want to see. Jesus says, go, go your way. Your faith has saved you. Mind the nuance here. Uh, go your way. He's not saying go our way. Go your way, the way you have chosen. You know that for about a hundred years, the early Christians were called people of the way. After Jesus describing himself in John's gospel as, I am the way, the truth, and the life. At any rate, Jesus tells him, go your way. Your faith has saved you. The blind man, of course, sees now with his eyes of the body, but obviously he has seen with his soul. He has accepted Jesus' invitation, and the Lord has accepted Bartimaeus' invitation. They have become one. The last line is immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the way. He didn't go his own way, um, but your way, Jesus says, go your way. His way, Bartimaeus's way, became Jesus' way. And uh, so he's on the journey with the whole crowd. He's not making this journey alone. Anyway, happy Halloween.